This is the closest that most of us will ever get to a rhinoceros in the bush. Cameraman Fano Sungwenya is at least three meters away from these prehistoric beasts of the African jungle. These armed rangers, though, have been even closer to the rhinoceros. They are the last line of defense against poachers. The rhino horn is said to fetch some $500,000 per kilogram on the black market. In the age of Africa's mineral explosion, the rhino horn remains the most sought after. The difference here is that the rhino is on the verge of extinction. These two rhino are under round-the-clock armed guard. It's an old-fashioned way to deal with desperate tech-savvy poachers who will do anything to get their bounty, including killing. It all sounds so brutal, but this is the beauty behind the brains. Francois Malby Anthony is the widow of the late elephant whisperer, Lawrence Anthony. Twelve years ago, she met her late husband in freezing London. She fell in love with the man and later on fell in love with the African bush. Today, his legacy and love for the wild lives on through her. Lawrence was, um, he was a great man. He was, he was a passionate man. He was passionate whatever he was doing. But when we decided to buy this game reserve 14 years ago, he decided on a great project to extend the land and to for the conservation of nature, conservation of wildlife, and uh, that's what he was working for every single day. The late Lawrence Anthony authored a bestseller, The Elephant Whisperer. It's a story about a special relationship he enjoyed with a herd of rogue elephants. He wasn't an elephant whisperer, he was more an elephant listener. He used to say, actually, they talked to me, and I listened. So that's the story of our, that book is the story of our game reserve, how we started it, and all the work mm -hmm. that we did, with all the challenges, everyday challenges that you encounter. But he wrote this book with a lot of humor, and there are some beautiful moments, and uh, some sad moments, obviously. I mean, when you live in the wild, there are always some challenges to go through. 14 years ago, Lawrence put an end to trophy hunting on this unspoiled piece of real estate. Legend has it that it was once the exclusive hunting grounds of King Shaka. Much of the original bush still exists, and it's the oldest privately owned game reserve in KwaZulu-Natal. Tula Tula Game Reserve is in the heart of Zululand and is only a two-hour drive from Durban. The big attraction here is a game drive in the wild. A team of rangers take tourists through rugged terrain and help them spot animals in the wild. Harry Stoker, a native of the United Kingdom, is a volunteer at Tula Tula. He wants to help dispel some myths about the African bush and its animals. You try and keep it light-hearted, but also with lots of information. Um, the bush is incredibly interesting and wildlife is it's an endless amount of, of information and some of it is quite surprising. Um, so if people go home with maybe a preconception that they had to be wrong. Um, you know, for instance, hyenas being scavengers. Well, here they're actually our top hunters. Um, you know, certainly me coming from England or people from America would think, um, you, know, or you, you, you know, you watch The Lion King, for example, and you see these cackling things and, and they're portrayed as evil, whereas actually here they're a really important part of our ecosystem. Um, so as long as, yeah, people have fun, they see what they want to see, you know, people come here for our elephants because of uh, Lawrence. Um, so that's, a, that's probably our biggest, biggest drawer in. So if we can show them the elephants nicely, um, explain, explain the story here, and hopefully they will go with, away with big smiles. Tula Tula has shot to fame today thanks to the remarkable story of how wild elephant was brought back to this land after more than 100 years of absence. It's also the natural habitat for a great many species of game, birds, acacia trees, and hardwoods. I came to see the animals, I came to see the fauna, I came to see the battledore eagle with his little red feet. I came to see um, the hoopoe with his crest on his head. I came to see the garden birds. I came to see um, and experienced um, uh, the graciousness of African people. Um, I wanted to come here um, to see the animals again while they're here. And these two are the only rhino on the game reserve. Keeping them safe and in the wild is a full-time and expensive commitment. We believe it works for us because it's, it's, we, don't, we don't want to dehorn them, obviously, because we feel that a rhino without a horn is not 
uh, it's not a rhino. Um, we believe it works for us. We employ seven people just to guard them. Armed guards are the solution. We feel that it works for us anyway. And I think it works for other places as well. This is, I mean, we obviously document ourselves a lot about rhino conservation. And mm. It costs a lot of money, but it is worth it, really. It's also worth visiting the game reserve for a relaxing time away from the noisy city. The luxury accommodation on offer is perhaps one of the reasons they enjoy a 40% return and repeat visitors, a rarity in today's hospitality industry. We've got two lodges. The uh, first lodge we opened 10 years ago uh, was uh, the Elephant Safari Lodge, which offers a great comfort with French cuisine and uh, great service, uh, air conditioning, spacious rooms. And then uh, six years ago, we decided to build uh, a different uh, lodge with a different concept, which is a tented camp, but very luxurious tented camp. For now, the legacy of Lawrence Anthony lived through his books and a game reserve that is more than just a pretty place in the KwaZulu-Natal bush.